Hello, hello everybody. This show has been created to inspire you to take action. All about celebrating and reframing what success looks like. To be the best version of ourselves that we can be. And we have incredible speakers for you tonight. everyone and welcome to the Future Females show. I'm Susanna Kennedy and as you know the Future Females show is here to inspire you to create the most brilliant life that you can. And how do we do that? We do that by sharing amazing people that have come before you that exist right now that are doing incredible things that you want to do and sharing their story and information that can help you on your journey. Today I have someone absolutely incredible. She is the full package. Arese Ugu is a Nigerian, I think royalty. I mean, she literally feels like royalty to me. She is absolutely amazing. She is a serial entrepreneur. She is an author. She really is an advocate for financial literacy and freedom for women around the world. She has, she is the founder of Smart Money and she has done so many other things. Guys, she is beautiful inside and out and we are so privileged to have her here today. Hi, Arese, how are you doing? Thank you so much for that introduction and thank you for having me. <laughs> it's so great to have you here. I really, really am excited because I know so many women out there that first of all battle with their finances and don't understand the importance of getting their financial um, their financial world really on track and in alignment with their yeah. mission because once we have that the, the sky's the limit, you know? And I know that yeah. you've done, you've not only been in the financial world for a very long time, but then you've also really helped many, many women to get financially literate, but also financially abundant, as, as I can yeah. see from the research that I have done. And this has inspired your own abundance. I know that you're an author and your books have now been picked up by Netflix and become a series. I was watching, I was binge watching, trying to get as much of it in as possible. And I just know you're a brilliant example for the women out there that are wannabe serial entrepreneurs that have maybe started one business and are looking to expand. And so I think yeah. let's start by just recapping your journey a little bit. If you could give us just in one or two minutes a real just recap of like where you started and what inspired you to go on this journey. Thank you so much. Um, so how did my journey start? I basically was, you know, your typical African millennial. I had all these dreams of moving back to Africa, moving back to Nigeria and working in, you know, finance and climbing up the corporate ladder um, and then I did that I got you know got my degree to move back to Nigeria got married had a baby had a fabulous wedding and then my child is a year old and my marriage falls apart and I basically mm. have to start my life again and I'm sitting there thinking wow this is so expensive because <laughs> I work in finance but in Nigeria, you had to pay two years rent up front, buy new furniture, all of that. It was so expensive. And I started thinking, I work in finance. I deal with a lot of like um, high net worth individuals and whatever. But what am I doing for myself in terms of I'm earning this much? I don't have the excuse of saying I'm a low income earner. But I it became like a big aha moment for me that I wasn't saving and investing enough in proportion to my salary. Hmm. So I started doing some digging and trying to sort of like get myself back on track because you know, people think finance, finance is such a big general thing, right? But so you meet investment bankers, people who work in private equity, who don't necessarily have their own personal finances together. So I was in that place where I was trying to come up with strategies for myself to kind of get myself on track. And I started to think there are probably more women like me who are smart, who want to live a good life, but no one has really told them about the fact that if they continue to spend everything that they earn every you know month, then there's no financial future. There's no cushion if, you know, emergencies happen, um, you know, like divorce or losing your job. So I basically 
started writing articles as I was discovering all the things I was discovering. And then I decided to write a book called The Smart Money Woman. And my idea for it was, I don't want to, because I don't want people to talk down on me. And I don't, I don't want to talk down to other people as well. I wanted to do it from a place of how can we have fun and make these personal finance conversations, A, put them in the context of, you know, Africa and the particular pain points that we deal with, but also um, make it fun. I wanted people to, when I thought about what's my objective for the book, I was like, I want people to read it the way and talk about it, the way they talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta, <laughs> the way they talk about, you know, Sex in the City. Yeah. Like, the way girlfriends talk about, you know, shoes, fashion, all of that. Why don't we talk about money like that? Mm. And then, you know, I wrote the book. It was around five um, African girls who basically represented different pain points when it came to money, whether it was the one who was in fashion and was confusing her business with a hobby or just getting out of debt or you know how to start making investment decisions things like that and then i went on a book tour to um several com countries across um africa nigeria ghana south africa mozambique you know quite a few places and it was so fun to basically see how even if we're so different um a lot of our pain points when it comes to these topics are very similar. Mm. Um, and then the Pan-African book tour did well. I went on to write a second book and then had the crazy idea to turn the book into a TV series. <laughs> ah, um, amazing. So that yeah. was your idea. So you were like, I, yeah. I think I'm going to turn my book into a TV series and then approach yeah. Netflix? Yeah, basically. So... It basically started from the feedback um, that I was getting from people who had read the book and loved it so much. I'd get um, messages like, oh my God, I could totally see this as a movie. And I thought, really? <laughs> a movie? <laughs> but um, it was just kind of an exciting process trying to figure out, you know, what what does the business model for something like that look like in hmm. Nigeria? Um, how would I make money from it? How, you know, do you do this at scale? Because um, it's very, it's so capital intensive and you really just, it's high risk as well because you don't know what the outcome is. Um, so at first we went on African Magic. Um, and then we were there for 13 weeks and then I approached Netflix and that took about a year to get on Netflix. Yeah, it um, takes time. It was the the the, it was so worth it because the the show was then like on a platform that gave us way more eyeballs and the response was just phenomenal. We were mm. number one on Netflix for 12 weeks, 13 weeks, um, which isn't usual for most shows. It's usually maybe like a two, a two week stretch um, and people just really loved it. and. I'm so glad for that. Yeah, it's um, it's so amazing. And um, I'm not sure if you know, but I'm a transformational coach. And you are the perfect example of what I believe the universe is always working for you, right? So whether you call it the universe, God, Allah Buddha, Christian, whatever yeah. it is, you know, it's always working <laughs> for you. It's always actually happening for you. Life is happening for you. And um, what you were speaking about, that you found yourself in this position, it's always this position where you feel stuck and you feel like you're in this dark place and actually the universe has totally taken you there and guided yeah. you there in order for you to find your light, like the light that you actually meant to bring to the world. And your story is the perfect example of that because I think so many women find themselves in these difficult positions, these difficult situations, and they go, oh my goodness, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm a victim of the circumstance, but actually you're the perfect yeah. example of going, no, I'm not a victim. This is an opportunity. This is an invitation for me to step up. And by you stepping up, you've yeah. been able to not only serve yourself brilliantly, but serve thousands of women, you know, hundreds and thousands of women. So mm -hmm. yeah, I love that so much. It's so, so, so brilliant. 
Can I ask you, you know, one of the things being an entrepreneur, especially a serial entrepreneur, we sometimes get lonely and we definitely find challenges, you know, along the way. What is something that keeps you motivated, that keeps you going um, that you could maybe share with our audience? Okay, I want to say my daughter and then I want to say legacy, but I think the two things are interlinked sort of because it's so... I think with everything that I do, I re obviously we want to make money or we're interested in like monetizing our craft. But I think with everything that I do, I'm so cognizant of like the legacy that I'm leaving behind. I want mm -hmm. a legacy of impact. I want to be known for good work. I want to be known for excellence. So that drives me. Even when there's, you know, different obstacles, I will cry. I will take a nap. I will get up and then I'll remind myself that I need to get to the finish line and I just need to, you know, get this done. And then my daughter's just turned 12. I really want her to see a mom who goes for it, who falls down and gets up, who sets goals and smashes them. Like mm -hmm. I want, I want her to be able to, you know, witness that so that she knows that that's something that she can do as well. I think that's so beautiful because, um, you know, so many moms give up so much of themselves to be moms and they, they keep saying to their daughters, don't do what I do, do what I say. When actually we need mothers like you to step into their light and to show them, no, this is what you can do. This is what you can achieve, you know? And, and so I really, really love that. How important do you think it is to have like a motivational pinpoint in your life like a, um, a a guiding light do you think that that's essential in terms of creating success in your life absolutely i think it's so important for you to have um because motivation keeps us going even when it gets really hard and when you do business or try to create anything especially like in africa where we have very specific like obstacles you will get to points where you want to give up. You will get to points where you're like, oh my God, like, is this risk even worth it? And motivation helps you kind of stay the course. Mm. So I, I know a lot of people feel like, oh my God, like motivational speakers, so unrealistic, so soft. So, but honestly, like, being able to affirm yourself, being able to hear something that inspires you could just be the thing that makes the difference between you getting to the finish line or you, you know, giving up um, when and something gets really, really tough. I absolutely agree with you. I couldn't agree with you more. So on your journey, I mean, this has been such an exciting, exceptional journey mm. for other women who would like to follow in your footsteps, want to be authors and want to be, um, you know, have a book that they can turn into a Netflix series or a film or whatever it is. What are the what are a few of the main learning points that you gathered along the way that you think are important that you could share with other female entrepreneurs? First thing would be believe in your own ability. I, I think that is, you know, when we hear that phrase, believe in yourself, believe in yourself, believe in yourself, it sounds so redundant, but it's actually the first thing. Mm. Um, I don't know how many times I maybe started out, I had an idea and then I started out and I think, this is so stupid. What are you doing? And who told you you can do this? Yeah. <laughs> right? Like you, you have those moments and what always drives me back like is knowing actually girl you can do this mm -hmm. like if you can if god gave you this idea then he expects you to execute it you will figure it out till you get you know to the finish line but if you don't believe in your own ability mm -hmm. right in the most delusional crazy way <laughs> yeah. you'll never get anything done so so believe in your own abilities like be so so like gung-ho about the fact that you can do the things that you set your mind to do um and then you know be resilient because mm. you can have a great idea but the um all the things in between <laughs> all the obstacles in between i can't tell you 
how many times I, during production, especially like the first one, I would go, I would be, be on my bathroom floor crying because mm. things that I never expected, you know, to happen, even with all the planning, like happened. Fired. <laughs> um, maybe people getting injured or mm. stuff going, you know, on strike or, you know, different things that you could have never envisioned. But if you're not resilient enough mm. to deal with the, with the obstacles, then yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think definitely be resilient, believe in yourself um, and stay on top of the, stay on top of the um, numbers. Because I think that a lot of, a lot of women specifically, we get bogged down by, yes, you have a great idea. Yes, you want to do something creative, right? But then we don't think about how we're going to monetize that craft. And I think some women feel like, oh my God, I'm just doing this. I just want to be creative. I just want to put something positive out in the world. I don't want to have to worry about like the money or maybe they feel guilty for charging because they're doing something amazing and they feel like they should be doing it why yeah. should i charge but i think it's so important for you to think about the financials um when you have an idea and think about how it's going to scale think about how it's going to be profitable because i feel like your your passion your ideas they should feed you and we should be okay um with that so pay attention to the numbers, figure out, you know, th this idea in executing it and taking the risk that I'm taking. What does it look like financially? Is the risk worth the payout? Yeah. Or what payouts can I actually get to? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love so much yeah. about what you've said because, um, you know, as a coach, I also, one of the things I focus on most is self-love so that you can have full self-acceptance and, and you can step into that version of yourself that really does believe in yourself so that you can go after the life that you want. And then authentic resilience, because what you're speaking about is authentic resilience. It's not this toxic positivity that pretends that everything yeah. is fine, but it's actually understanding how to move through conflict without suffering and actually being able to get up and learn what you need to learn and carry on going. So I really love that you said that, but also moving into the financial principles and understanding that, you know, if we are bringing gifts to the world, of course we should be paid, you know, and that's, and that's something that yeah. a lot of women battle with. They're like, oh no, I yeah. shouldn't be paid, or maybe I'm not worthy of that. And it all links back to the self-worth, right? So, I, th I really invite the listeners, everybody that is watching right now, to look at your relationship with what you believe you deserve in this life. Like that is so, so, so important. Sure. And then also, are you authentically resilient? Do you really know how to move through challenges um, without suffering and with gaining what you needed to learn from that. I think that that is so, so beautiful. And then moving on to your next point that you brought up, which is the financial principles. It would be great if you could share a few financial principles with ladies today, even if it's two or three that they could take away right now and implement in their lives. Because I know that that's one of your fundamental goals Instincts, is to empower yeah. women in that way. So if you could, that would be great. Okay, I think a key one for me, if I wanted to leave a message for, you know, other female entrepreneurs would be take paying yourself first seriously um, and separating like your personal finances from your business finances. Because I think that, you know, with entrepreneurs, our, our basically our ideas or our businesses become like our children or our family members. And sometimes we can't differentiate ourselves from the business or the project or the idea. And if you don't separate your personal finances from your business finances, you kind of tend to forget that you need to be building wealth for yourself as well alongside, mm -hmm. you know, your business. So sometimes people get to a point where the business is so big, like the brand is so big, but they themselves are not financially secure because they haven't invested, um, for themselves as a separate entity. So I think it's important to pay attention to that so that you don't get to a point where you've built this incredible business 
but your personal wealth is um, not at the level that it should be for the work yeah. that you've done. Um, I think, you know, pay attention to numbers. I, I find many <laughs> women tend to be scared of numbers. They don't like to look at financial statements. They don't like to look at bank statements. But I find that, you know, just confronting the numbers, not trying to be an accountant or anything, but just knowing how to interpret them so that you can make decisions as opposed to assumptions, hmm. I think are the, you know, the key principles that I would, you know, share. I like that. Decisions as opposed to assumptions, because I think that and assumptions is, is the mother of all beep, beep, beeps. <laughs> we all know, like it's such a problem. And we do do that so, so often because yeah. we're scared and then we just like avoid. Um, OK, I've got three questions left for you. The first one is, what is the best question you've ever been asked in an interview? What is the best question I've ever been asked? Mm, I guess maybe the question I like answering the most is, um, <laughs> what's my favorite thing about this journey? What's my favorite thing about the journey mm -hmm. that I've been on? Um, yeah, because that's something that really means so much to me, which is basically the impact. So since I self-published the book in 2016, right, um, <laughs> there hasn't been a single day that I haven't gotten a DM or an email or a comment or someone reviewing it on YouTube or Instagram. And it's so wild because like, it's been seven years since the book has been published for people to still connect to the material as though it was yesterday. Um, mm. It's so humbling for people to message you and say, because I read the book, it's changed my financial mindset. Mm. Um, I've started investing. I, I now own land or I bought my first property or I've started a stock portfolio. It's, it's so humbling. Like it's amazing to have put something in, into the world that not only touches people the way that it has, but has helped to change them for the better. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And, and for all of you watching out there, I just want to reiterate that we thrive on that like creators um you know people who are, are their life's work is about uplifting others we love the feedback so keep sending feedback definitely send a whole lot of dms <laughs> and um, <laughs> comments and likes i mean it makes such a difference i really really love that the next question for you is what is the best piece of advice you've ever received focus on your focus do not look left do not look right because we <laughs> In the, in the world that we live in today, um, I think that people are easily distracted from mm. their purpose. And whether it's social media or people's in real life behaviors, we tend to sort of get distracted by what other people are doing or not doing, as opposed to focusing on our own goals and our own lives. Um, I think that's the best advice I've ever gotten. Focus on your focus. Focus on your goals. Be so consumed with your goals that you, you don't care what the next man is doing. Yeah, I love that. I, I, there's a saying that goes, energy flows with focus goes. And, um, and, Ooh, and I, like I use that. that all the time, you know, because I'm like focus because the energy will flow wherever your focus goes. So I really love that. And the last one is we love, I, I really think that women are just too humble and they don't celebrate themselves mm -hmm. enough. And um, we here at the Future Females Show always love women to celebrate themselves and acknowledge themselves for what they have achieved in life. What do you feel is your biggest achievement? The thing that you feel most proud of so far? Um. My biggest achievement is my daughter. Mm. Um, but I'm going to put that aside because I know that what you were looking for was a business was a business answer. But my I, I think it humbles me every day that I feel like a kid that is raising a kid. Um, and every every year that goes by, I'm like, wow, you're really doing this. 
you're really raising another human being and instilling values in her and just watching her excel um, in school as a person, be so kind, be so affectionate, like win prizes. Like it, it just makes me feel like I'm doing something right. Um, and then I guess work-wise, really turning my book into a TV series is <laughs> now on Netflix. So far has been, you know, my biggest accomplishment. Season two coming, you know, hopefully at the end of this year. Um, and it's just so exciting because it's such, you know, those goals that almost kill you. Yeah. <laughs> but when you, when you, um, achieve them like they feel like oh my god because I didn't go to film school I had never written a book before my first degree is in business and management my second degree is in development economics and <laughs> if someone asked me like when I actually my university alumni magazine asked me a few years ago did you think that you would be doing you know film or did you think you'd be writing a book and the ab answer was absolutely not it did not even occur to me. So when I think about my accomplishments, I, I'm so fulfilled by the fact that like I took on this challenge for something that I didn't necessarily have, you know, it wasn't like a linear sort of path where it's like, oh, I'm going to go to film school. I'm going to learn how to do hmm. this um, um, and then do it. It was just kind of something I fell into. And to make it work and make it such a huge success is massive. <laughs> so massive. But but I also mm -hmm. love that you said your daughter. You know, I think that, yeah. you know, as a society, we've moved away from celebrating the mother and mm -hmm. um, and all that the mother does bring to to the next generation of human beings that are going to lead change in this world. And for me, it's so important. And having that balance of being your own human, but also being a mother, um, I think is yeah. an exceptionally challenging thing to do really well. And so the fact that you are coming forward and going, my biggest achievements are my daughter, <laughs> you know, and what I'm seeing in my daughter and also my work, it just shows that yeah. you have done a great job so far of finding Thank a balance you. within that, you know. I could talk to you for hours. There's so many more questions <laughs> that I have, but we have run out of time. I'm so appreciative of you taking your time to share with us today. And I know that the Future Females community is just going to love <laughs> listening to you. So hopefully they'll be sending you a lot of DMs um, and asking <laughs> you questions directly. But thank you. Thank you so much for your time thank today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. And I look forward to connecting with you again outside of the platform Ooh, for sure. <laughs> very, very soon. Thank you. Absolutely. Have a great day. Thank you. And for everybody watching at home, I'm Susanna Kennedy. You've been watching the Future Females show. Please remember to like, comment and share so that we can share the magic with other female entrepreneurs. And I wish you all the best. Till next time. Bye for now.